ultra short case in fact this diabetic lady has presented with numbness and pain of right lower limb on walking and standing for the last one year that's only complaint next time she was found a foot drop let's see the examination and show the video part of it and testing is inversion which is quite normal in this patient he actually severely weak but the policy is long as also is weak inversion is also weak so that's all in the video the reference is by that young jacks were absent because he is a diabetic i'll show the video part once again for just to so it's a short video only inversion is normal good inversion ehl is weak plantar pressure is also weak inversion is weak plantar pressure is also weak okay now so so she has put drop i forgot to write weakness of inversion ehl dose flexion extensive but proxy policy is long as well as plantar flexion both angles were absent the sensory system was quite inconsistent so where is your uh, lesion in this patient anyone who want to voice out can answer hello sir i have given them rights to talk they'll talk yeah yes sir the muscle so looking like a common peroneal sciatic uh, no palsy only sir okay right it cannot be sciatic it can be common peroneal because flex support as long as also is weak plantar flexion is also weak so it can be common peroneal palsy it could be sciatic as you said anyone else have got any other opinion l5 is it s5 l5 s1 radiculopathy sir L5 is unlikely because the inversion is paired. Usually, both the inversion and the inversion will be lost if it is an L5. No, but why can't the sciatic nerve palsy in that case? Um, uh, dorsiflexion is paired, sir. So dorsiflexion is weak. Dorsiflexion inversion is weak. The dorsiflexion and flexion uh, the inverted position is normal. Inversion. So, uh... Uh, sir, what is uh, I, I didn't uh, get the initial uh, history. Could you just flip it on me because the title was lost. I'll tell you once again. Yes, okay. The video once again. Okay. Just come with difficulty in walking. Look at the. I'm taking the iron. It's the one I'm not. Okay. 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 Uh, this uh, most likely is a, if it's acute onset, it's a most likely a cortical lesion. All right, one week duration. Now, I, I want only the localization. Forget about the etiology part. Uh, because uh, if if it's a L five S one, we should expect some uh, weakness of the abductors and the strength of the hip. Yeah, it was not there in this patient. The transpatient was in actually not very, very, very cooperative. That part very difficult to come in. But obviously, there was no obvious weakness in the abductor. Then, if 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 so, sciatic uh, palsy, then the angle jack uh, should should have been lost. Yeah, no. Angle jack. Angle jack is absent bilaterally because she is a diabetic. So nothing is uh, the sciatic nerve palsy. Okay. Hamstring, hamstring is normal, sir. Normal, normal. 
sir is a ehl uh, past week same as weak as uh, dorsiflexion sir dorsiflexion also is weak but in <laughs> the only i you try me to give the clue <laughs> <laughs> okay i'll tell you what finding see go back to the video the what muscle i am checking first was abl is anterior that is the dorsiflex position i am checking the inversion not in the plantar flexor position you can see in the dorsiflex position i am checking the plantar inversion that is good that means tibialis anterior is good so what is it tell you what is it tell you if tibialis anterior is good it cannot be called peroneal now it cannot be sciatic nerve sciatic it has to be cortical lesions cortical or l phase lesions okay l phase lateral nerve this patient had an epic disc prolapse producing l phase and lateral nerve the clue was that the root value of tibialis anterior is l4 so it can be inspired in l phase in lateral nerve if down in surface l4 but in very if it is a conbenal now sacral mm -hmm. we expect tibialis anterior to be weak here it is good power despite severe weakness of ehl other inverters and a proxy pathology strong and that's a, i brought the video just for that clue you should look carefully for tibialis anterior if it, it cannot be inspired in uh, conbenal pulsar sacral nerve okay i'll go to the another case now it says sir any any questions in the previous case sir one doubt sir yeah please please uh sir if uh, if it is an l5 radiculopathy that is causing an ehl weakness wouldn't the eversion also be weak sir eversion is weak here eversion ah uh, eversion is also weak in this patient eversion is significantly in weak. inversion inversion the plantar flexor position will be weak but not in the uh, dorsiflex position In the plantar okay. flexor, you can check in the inversion. You can check in two position. Okay, inversion sir. in the dorsiflex position is tibialis anterior. Inversion in the plantar flexor position is tibialis posterior. Flexor hallux is longus and and flexor digitorum longus. All the muscles are inverters in the plantar. Okay, position. okay sir. Mm -hmm. Sir, then what about the hip abduction, sir, which is also yeah. L5? Yeah, what I said is hip abduction should have been weak in this patient. But they, it's apparently normal because patient is not very cooperative. What I said mentioned. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. But the clue, even if the patient is not cooperative, you can make a diagnosis because the sparing of the tibial is anterior. Okay. Now go to the other case. This again for localization only, not a challenging problem. Challenging case will come subsequently. A seventy-year-old man presented with giddiness, diplopia, and anxiousness for eight for two days duration. All of you can make a thing of a brain stimulation. Now look at the video of the patient. I'll show the video to the. I'm asking you to the sorry. The initial part I missed probably my mistake. You asked me to the right side. You were not able to. Okay. Look up and down normally. Hello. ഒന്നുകൂടി <laughs> 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 Only on the left side, right eye is not directing. Upward and downward is normal. Download not to push. Download. Madhi, madhi, madhi. Very good. Now, if the light load is not there, what are the other things? What are the other things? Okay. Okay. The body is not moving. Ah, madhi, madhi. Already, already. Ah, okay. Can you move the other side? Move the other side. Can you move the other side? Okay. Okay. So. on asking him to look to the right side he could not move both eyes to the right on asking him to look to the left side right eye does not attack convergence appears to be the right element which is comes this is the findings in this patient so where is your localization is it right sixth nerve palsy and middle rectus palsy right obtuse nuclei complex there is lateral gaze center and right middle rectus palsy right obtuse nuclei complex and right ml 
write PPR up, or write them. And multiple choice question. You can choose which one. Sir, so, if you want to see the video, you can show what with the uh, right amen. I didn't get you. The yeah, and the first part again in this. You mean write PPR up with MLF or abuse nuclear commerce with MLF? Yes. Yeah. Sir, if it is right, uh, MLF, left uh, abduction should be weak, sir. Uh, right MLF patients, right abduction should be weak. No? Right adduction should be weak. Right adduction, sir. Yeah. It is weak here, no? Uh, uh, the, okay, before, at this point, what do you think? Suppose I have not done that. What do you think? Okay. I'm going so to the, do the 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 abduction nucleus complex contains both uh, the abduction nerve proper as well as the victim. So uh, the this policy can be explained uh, with a lesion on the right side. The, the MMLF lesion on the right side can uh, explain the adaptive uh, lag on the right side. And, uh, the last two options are the possibility, right? Abuse a nuclear complex plus right MLF or right PPR plus right MLF. That's the correct answer. There are two options here. It can be right abuse a nuclear complex and right MLF or right PPR with right MLF. The only problem here is that in this we expect convergence to be normal. But in some of the defect, many people, old people, convergence cannot be totally laid up. But our the cardinal finding, these are the two possibilities. So what test, bedside test will you do? Before? BOR. We are going to do the BOR. So let's see the BOR. His eyes are moving to the right side. Both eyes are moving to the right side. But right eye is not moving to the left side. I'll show you once again. Both eyes move to the right side or move, or move to the right side. Turning the head to the right, right side points to attack. So, did you see the right eye moving outward? During moving to the left side? It can be easily seen, no? So, where is the addition now? If you are up. If you are yeah, it is in the PPR. So, uh, for the, um, the, the this is the pathway from the abducens nucleus it goes to the middle rectus and supplies the. Okay, this is the pathway, and the photomesis nucleic pathway connects with the PPR. So, in this patient, if the lesion is in the right lateral rectus or the middle rectus is the first possibility. That's not possible because there is failure of um, an, uh, adduction of the left eye also. It's a gaze palsy, not an inflammatory play So that possibility is out. Other possibility is abduction nuclear complex and third nerve palsy. That's a possibility. But we have to implicate two sides of each. Third nerve middle rectus palsy. So more logical thing will be to think of an abduction nuclear palsy and the MLF adjoining because a single site can explain. Abduction nuclear complex plus right temperature. Or lesion should be the PPR and the Right, I mean, these are the two possibilities we consider. So here is likely to be PPR because what happens is that in PPR of lesion, right eye will not move to the right side as you can see here. As they put to the right side, both eyes are not moving to the right side. On looking to the left side, the right eye fails to adduct because of the associated MLF lesion. The left eye abducts, as you can see in this patient. Now during oclocephalic testing, is happening that both eyes are moving to the right side. That means the lesion is, lesion is in the PPRF, not in the ablation nucleus. The right eye will not adduct even in ocularcephalic because the pathway for the ocularcephalic after reaching the ablation nucleus is just to go through the MLF. So that I will not adduct. Okay. So you can't differentiate a middle tractus versus an MLF by ocularcephalic. But you can differentiate nuclear complex from PPR by ocular Okay, that's again not okay. This is the path showing the parameter path implicating the seventh nucleus and this thing. 
Okay. Right PPR ML, right self parameters. Now, shall we go to the next case? Any, any questions in that case, previous case? Hi, Dr. Madhu, can you hear me? Yeah, please, please. <laughs> I joined late. I joined late. Sorry. Achha, uh, Madhu, I joined. I missed the diagnosis of that first anterior tibial weakness. What was the diagnosis finally? That is L5S and radiculopathy. The clue was. No, 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 no. What radiculopathy? L5S, right? L5S, right? Okay, okay, okay. Got it. Got it. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, can I uh, sure. request, uh, sir, to uh, Sir uh, Madhusudan, sir, to Pull the lid of your laptop a little closer because we can't see you completely. Yes, yes, this looks perfect. Okay, sorry, sorry. No, okay. no problems. Yeah. Now, um, and is there any question in the last case? I'll go to the next case. This, okay. Now, I've got a really good case now. The story of a 70 year old woman. Her complaint started as numbness of both lower limbs below knee for the last four months. Treated to be diabetic at that time. Whether we don't know whether she had been diabetic earlier. I don't know. The present complaint is actually imbalanced while standing with tendency to fall backward for the last three weeks. Hence, her relatives advised her to walk with the help of a walker. About seven days later, she noticed difficulty to walk even with help of her and total inability to walk for the last four weeks. The story is she was treated from pain and numbness four months back. When the doctor he did diabetes, and that time she was able to walk normally without any problem. The complaint started two weeks back. While she was standing, it tended to fall backward. Hence, weight is reduced to walk with the help of a walker. One week later, she noted. <laughs> And uh, even with the help of a doctor, not enabled to walk for the last four days. Can you unmute? Can you mute those who are uh, can unmute whenever it's necessary? Presently, when a person please uh, mute the mic, otherwise, extraneous noise will come. There is some relevant past history in this patient. She's an old case of polymyelitis, suffered in the right lower limb. But she was walking without support till one month back. Even though she had polymyelitis, she was perfectly all right. She was walking, carrying out routine activities. She was treated for renal calculator nine months back. She was also found to have excessively drowsy for the last one month. Tends to stay most of the time, which became worse for the last two days. So this is the story. At the time of admission, a proper examination could not be done because of the drowsiness. So the examination was done. No examination was not done at that time. Two days after the admission, drowsiness improved and examination was done this time. So this is the examination finding. Okay, power was obviously normal. And keep is also good. So the lower limb just got almost zero power. She could not keep her leg straight. Action certainly is also zero. She cannot keep it again. It's gravity. It falls down. Also, the limb is also falling. Respiration is also weak. It's a little bit power in the dose flexion compared to the proximal muscles. But one to two power. Upper limb repressed for all normal. Both knee and analgesics were absent. And there was indefinite, but the pyramid cuts on both sides. 
So this is the story of the patient. If you want to see the video once again, you can show. Otherwise, you can tell the findings. Okay. Patient is slightly drowsy. Cranial examination is normal. The motor upper limbs tone power normal in the upper. Lower limb is hypotonic. Power zero to one in the proximal muscles, especially hip flexors and knee extensors. About one to two in the distal muscles. Patient cannot sit in the bed, she falls back to it. Deep reflex upper limbs normal, lower limb absent in both lower limb, both knee and ankle check, plantar spread soft. Sensation and vibration is distally in pain, but able to feel the touch and pain normally. I did not check the JPS because it was not that it cooperative for JPS. SLR was negative. So uh, where is your localization with this finding? What could what all could be the localization? Or all could be the uh, Sir, it's likely it's a L element syndrome. Yeah. Because uh, there are no definite no different signs of a upper motor neural lesion, whether in the okay. cortex or in the subcortical. Yeah. So uh, since there are uh, sensory symptomatology, more likely it is either in the nerves or in the roots. So you want to consider a cordicone lesion? Or uh, a uh, either a cordicone or a multiple uh, radiculopathy involving only low, low limbs, sparing upper limbs. Yeah, Some... yeah that, that's, that's what called a radical radiculopathy. Okay, okay, sir. So, any, anyone else want to give any opinion? But bladder is not affected in this patient. So, the localization? Yeah. The uh, one is anterior heart cells, sir. Because okay. although sensory symptoms were there, uh, although uh, the signs were very minimal. Yeah. And okay. uh, motor okay. element syndrome. Now, moreover, the sensory could have been due to diabetes, which had been not detected earlier because it had complained numbness of four months back. But anticonsil only compared to the lower limb produces so zero power, really good upper limbs and all. Do you think it's likely? That is a bit odd, sir. Yeah. Uh, but that is the first possibility that comes to my mind. And second, uh, yeah. Although another thing is that whether it is a pure motor type of a GDS because very short duration. Right. That's a, that's a radicular neuropathy like pattern. They like can man. That also can explain the digital vibration sensory and also. That's a good possible radicular neuropathy pattern. Agree. Any other opinion anyone would like to voice out? No, Madhu. No, the duration, sir. Please, uh, Kaul, please. No, uh, you see, uh, uh, whenever there is a uh, any syndrome which is restricted to lower limbs, and it's not there at all, upper limbs. I think we should always, uh, we will always try to rule out any uh, local, uh, as you said, any uh, spinal cord lesion disc at that level. But we should also never miss to uh, rule out any vascular lesion. So we, I would definitely carefully look at the peripheral pulses and all that, whether there's yeah. any underlying vascular cause. Yeah, perfectly right. But there is no pain in this patient. You're not complaining pain there in the lower limb, but that's a possibility you have to strongly consider. Yeah. Hey, anyone else, somebody else wanted to make a comment, please? Sir, what was the duration of weakness, sir? Dur uh, duration of weakness only three weeks. That means it started initially as uh, um, in, uh, two weeks. The standing, she was tending to fall backward, probably because of the weakness of the hip extensors and front muscles. And that progressed, that she was needed to support walk with a walker. Then one week later, she was not able to walk with her walker at all. And for the last four days, she became better. So over a period of two weeks, her weakness progressed to total inability to work. Even though she had had polio earlier, she was walking normally till one month. Okay, okay, sir. 
sir can it be can it be a slowly progressive cidp sir yeah it takes one possibility that the, the doctor was concerning that is radical neuropathy there is a cidp the only odd point is really confined to the lower limb a cidp producing great zero for both lower limbs where in the upper limbs is really odd but that possibility has to be strongly considered agreed with you ஒரே <laughs> So this okay. backward fall is secondary to what sir, position, uh, imbalance, secondary to posterior column or the weakness sir? The weakness, sir, you should have to get zero power, the postural muscle. So she cannot stand because of the weakness, that's why she is falling backward. Sensory loss is not much, she is able to only mild vibration loss, pain and temperature are normal. Sir, can you show the history slide sir, once again? Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. The imbalance is probably because of the weakness. Sir, so the cause of the drowsiness, sir, then says why she was drowsy for the first two, three days. Yeah, yeah. It, it, not only one, one, it has been drowsy for one month. M- Madhu? Yeah, please. Uh, see, even though she doesn't have much sensory loss and even though, uh, uh, you know, there is no pain and other things, I think because of the restriction to lower limbs and because of being a diabetic i would definitely consider diabetic lumbosacral uh, radiculopathy in this patient yeah that's a good that's a possibility you have to keep in mind even though there was not much of a pain that sometimes yeah. it may not be there in diabetic yeah. sir as poliomyelitis is pure element can it be a post polio syndrome sir no post polio syndrome is never such acute it is very very slowly progressing Okay, never produce state zero power in uh, one day or a bit in two weeks time. Never. It's usually unilateral. Okay, let us see the it's a difficult case. Okay, so we'll go to the investigations. Okay. What investigation like to know? So that these are the possibility what can keep in mind. So I kept radical neuropathy is one possibility. And Paxa neuropathy as uh, Dr. Paul was telling. Then other possibility can is possible neuropathy with neuropathy because Postal muscles are severely affected, this muscle is less that much affected. And it's a cord icona syndrome. These are the possibilities one can have to keep in mind. So thought of MRA LS spine, say some study and see this was the conversation I wanted. And also asked for an EEG because she was drowsy. I don't know why she's becoming drowsy for the last one month. The lumbosacral spine shows. Canal stenosis at L4, L5. You can see the canal at L5 as well, but predominantly L4, L5. This is at higher level. This is L2, L3, L3, L4, and L4, L5. See the L4, L5 is a significant canal stenosis here. L5 is one is mild by actually primary stenosis, but the canal diameter is markedly low at L4, L5. Not because the disc alone, because of the prominent um, hypertrophy of the epiphyseal joints. You can the corresponding at I'm showing here the L4, L5 level, sagittal, and this is the axial showing the stenosis here. This is L5 S1. The green marking is the marker. This is the corresponding level, L5 S1 level. Cervical spine was showing mild spondylotic change, mild compression cervical cord. MRI brain was taken because she was drowsy, wanted to something occurring in the brain as well. The MRI brain was essentially normal. There is no diffusion rate abnormality in the parasitic area. Also. So MRI shows severe canal stenosis. Now, uh, what do you want now? CSM no, any understanding, sir. Okay. So my question is, uh, can you explain any of these findings with your MRI finding? No, sir. No, that's the, that's the answer I want. So straight away, even if you find canal stenosis, don't think that that is causative. You are missing something there. Maybe there, so what? 
it must have been there for earlier but that cannot explain the possible muscle weakness so that is a totally an incidental finding now the eeg was taken which showed up i know i'm showing the eeg mild dispute diffuse theta is showing not any any other abnormal deep is seen now the question came okay, then could it be a cordycone lesion due to non compressive compressive etiology some likely it can be a non compressive etiology it's something like a meningitis affecting the cordycone so what else you need in cs and conduction and c a proper puncture yeah yeah so so ncs was done which showed decrease hemap amplitude from all the muscles peroneal edb both right and left peroneal then right peroneal ta was also amplitude is low tibial tibial pick up from the adductor hallux abductor hallux was again low on both sides gastrocnemius pick up is also low and the conduction velocity was slightly decreased in the tibial and uh, both tibial nerve now question number 1 uh, can you give do you give this demyelinating i mean this decreased conduction velocity significant or not the amplitude of the nerve is also decreased is it significant no because this is only across the tibial see tibial sometimes can produce because of the uh, the deeply situated thing it sometimes can produce some kind of might prolonged it is no so that that do not give much importance because the other nerves are done and not have got a good velocity that means this is not at all important what you find is axonopathy the same epic tick is that is more important rather than my decrease in the conduction velocity so this should not be given significance and in the upper limb there was a mild this is an unrelated carpet on upper limb by the amplitude was all good so there is no abnormal movement and the left median epb is also not picked up now coming to the sensory the upper limbs okay normal except for the median both cow and the carpet on but in the lower limb no potential is picked up so the peroneal sural are all absent so the fave is also not elicitable from the lower limb so what is now what is what, what is the thing which make it unlikely unlikely for a quadricanalis because snaps are all absent in this patient along with about the decrease in map amplitude so a quadricanalis becomes less likely so and it says show severe sensory motor neuropathy of the lower limb now uh, what will be what in which you want now cs lumbar puncture lumbar puncture okay so if it not be cannot then, then the question is is it a simple peripheral neuropathy obviously not because a peripheral neuropathy cannot produce a severe posmus weakness of lower limb without affecting the distal part of the upper limb so it's not a peripheral neuropathy due to diabetes or anything else your to the radicular neuropathy is other possibility something like a gps like presentation which can affect possible muscles and is the sensory loss that's a possibility but the only odd point is that it is fine is confined to the lower limb only in c does not train it in fact in c was strength predominantly axon involvement in deep that makes it unlikely but you can always argue that could be a man like gps variant no uh, so you want a csf study no the csf was done csf was normal there is no elevated protein no cells cytology normal so what is it so we are nowhere we are reaching nowhere that means it's not a cordycana it is not a peripheralopathy radical neuropathy is a possibility it can be totally ruled out but csf is normal and the ncv is not a demanding pattern the man we will confine only to the lower limb is a possibility but we are we are not very happy because as colloid stelling is confined only to the lower limb there is something very uh, odd for a ordinary cadp or uh, say i mean avdp the mri of the lumbar plexus sir 
with contrast lumbar plexus was not plexopathy is that for you you are keeping in mind but that's a possibility we have to keep in mind but we all upper and lower limb both are equally affected all together that possibility can be ruled out agree snap is absent no sir yeah snap is also absent mm-hmm. that can you can say that it is due to the diabetes mellitus producing plexopathy that possibility can be under we don't know whether snap was abnormality was there present earlier because about four months back she complained of dampness maybe due to diabetic neuropathy so emg muscles was done sir because diabetic amyotrophy can produce such uh, uh, may not be helpful can can be helpful only in one aspect because whatever possibility we have considered it's all neuropathy we are only going to find denervation unless you have a myopathy you can do anything else. so before that sir one more doubt sir sir one more doubt sir please please go on sir uh, what is the significance of specificity in uh, gbs sir, with sural sparing yeah that's a classical ncb abnormality in uh, gbs is sural sparing with absent uh, ulnar snap that is because Uh, uh, why it has occurred is because what is the explanation what we given is that in in a sural now you are picking up from behind the lateral maniotis the sensory potential is picking up from the lateral maniotis whereas ulna now you are picking from the lateral finger that means it will be picked up early in ulna now rather than the sural it is only one explanation but this is to be one of the classical finding in aed that is sural sparing ulna reflection why it is occurred in like that both are peripheral nerves should occur one is paired and other things is difficult to explain this is the explanation is that even the distal part of the sural nerve may be affected but it can be picked up because the emanation is proximal you you got the point so it may okay. be yeah that is a that is explanation they are offering no okay sir thank you sir no the one possible take up to us whether he has got a myopathy with neuropathy something like a paraneoplastic so i took an uh, a cpk was done cpk also normal no elevation of cpk so if the cpk is low now since cpk is low can be metabolic myopathy where the cp the next thought is metabolic myopathy with cpk is normal so we did a metabolic the workup was done the routine the count everything normal but serum creatinine was high 2.5 these are the subsequent values other lft functions were normal then the other important finding was that her calcium was high serum calcium was high phosphorus was 5.4 magnesium 1.9 so pdh was all ordered for thing in possibility of hyperparathyroidism pdh contrary to expectation came low it was 1.2 so it is not a primary or secondary hyperparathyroidism causing hypercalcemia so pdh is very low so then we thought well could be driver or police this low since pdh is low so we inspected high pdh having hyperparathyroidism in our mind so repeated still calcium was high it was not a lab error continued to be high so this is serial said the calcium in case is 0.66 second uh, two days later is 12.21 so thought of vitamin d was done things could be some hyper vitamin d intoxication that happened in adavel was also normal So naturally, when they when in doubt, difficult difficult situation, they consult the physician, the nephrologist. They consider possibility of multiple myeloma and primary present to consider the older age in due to it. So we as for X-ray chest, it is normal. The ongoing antibodies were sent. Uh, cortisol was normal. The CA one twenty five, CA CA for nineteen point nine. They were all within normal range. Mild elevation was seen, but otherwise normal. Then the next question came: Could it be multiple, multiple myeloma we are dealing with? 
The pelvic sphere was normal. Serum electrophoresis was done, which showed mild elevation of a gamma globulin, marginal rise. So the nephrologist had asked for serum to be sent for immunofixation. That was sent, but the result was not obtained. It's A B G. Okay. So any other test you want to do? Thyroid, sir. Pardon? Uh, thyroid levels. T three T four T six. They are normal. They are thyroid normal. I did not mention this normal. That was shown the initial picture. It was shown. Uh, it's kind of not uh, the perineal plastic. Still, any other perineal plastic uh, presentation? Yeah, that's the thing which we can do. Perineal plastic workup. So, can we proceed with muscle biopsy, sir? In these cases? Yeah, we can do a metabolic myopathy. Uh, muscle biopsy is not going to be much unless it's a, a, a hereditary metabolic myopathy like for example acid maltase and things like that. In acquired metabolic myopathy like it's not like to be very healthy. So, so what about the uh, acidic thorax or uh, serum ACE level? Okay, so let us see the um, uh, ultrasound abdomen was done which is normal. This is the other values which are not normal. ANA profile is normal. So the patient was put on calcitonin by the nephrologist. Renal function improved. And this is the follow-up value. The calcium level came down. CP, this is a CPK calcium and this thing which has again improved with on subsequent uh, after putting the patient calcitonin. Okay, this is a follow-up after we follow up video after five days. Let us see what is happened to the patient. The power has become better now. It's become properly gate free. They will elevate. But this has become good power now. That weakness is remaining because of the old myelitis on the right foot. The power has also become better. The reflexes continue to remain absent. The problem might have been the earlier problem. Okay, that means this weakness was due to hypercalcemia, which improved after correction of the calcium beta. Hypercalcemic myopathy with hypercalcemia probably could in a real first also improved. Now the next question now came, what caused the hypercalcemia? It was not due to hyperparathyroidism, it was not due to multiple myeloma, it was not due to hypervitamin D intoxication. It is less likely to be but but can't rule out. But one more thing here to uh, think, which is, is that it be sarcoidosis. But CT, sex ray chest was taken normal. ACE level was with mild elevation. It's only 12 point, uh, not, uh, not a mild elevation. Little bit, double the value, 123. So what do you want? CT chest was, boomer was still, CT chest was done which showed high lateralities. In fact, subsequently, Condor study was also shown, I couldn't get the picture somewhere, rather I forgot to take it. Multiple glands could be seen in the hyla region, and it was a case, or Condor city, I, I, I couldn't show. So it's most likely a case of a sarcoid, because the hyla lymphadenopathy and producing hypercalcemia, and the patient improved remarkably with the correction of calcium, as that myopathy is concerned. So this is the diagnosis of this patient. So any questions? Sir, uh, sir, uh, two questions, sir. One is the cause of drowsiness and other is upper limbs are uh, uh, spared. Yeah, that, that drowsiness is because of the hypercalcemia itself. Once the calcium level has came down, the patient started improving. Hypercalcemia can produce drowsiness. Now, why the upper limb muscles are not affected, difficult to explain. I do not know. You should expect a but. Uh, uh, that is clinical neurology, not clinical medicine. Everything would not go in the way we expected it. But you have to suspect with the available key
One, one thing you had suspected possible my pain in this patient because the possible is more involved than the distal uh, rapid rapid progression. Some metabolic abnormality was found. Sir, uh, was she received any uh, steroids at uh, any point of time during the? No, no, no never. We, no, we never put the patient steroid at any point of time. Never. So the abnormal nerve conduction studies. Okay. Yeah, that's because the diabetic is very quite a diabetic. That is why this patient was detected to be diabetic four months back. In okay. fact, she might have been the diabetic earlier. We don't know because she went to the doctor for numbness. That time, the doctor did diabetes. We don't know how long it has been there. The reflux loss, etc., might have been there before. She came to because she's unable to walk. That is that is due to the myopathy part. So, so Madhur, the only clue in this patient came basically from the serum calcium levels. Yes, exactly. That's exactly the clue. And clinically, we went ahead with as as you, as we as a neurologist should do. Think about whether it's called radical neuropathy or it's a cardiac analysis. That's why we went ahead with that angle. But nothing is clinging. The MRI spine does not clinch. Then CV is not clinging. Um, yeah. How, how much was the how much how much was the initial calcium, please, uh, Madhu? How much was it just for? It was uh, it was twelve. Uh, it, uh, it was 12.6. Yeah. So, 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 so the lesson is that we should do all these metabolic parameters in every patient, not only in this patient. Yeah. And if it is consistently abnormal, we must pursue it. I mean, that's what I would take home messages. Correct. Now, now it is easy to explain everything. I mean, yeah. <laughs> drowsiness and all that. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, no. Otherwise, one would never think of sarcoidosis with this person. Yeah, yeah. because person name is possible myopathy. And neuropathy. So it mean, we, 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 because one was present earlier, one has occurred now. That often very happens clinically, especially diabetic patient. We don't yeah. know what deficit has been that earlier. We try to link together and make a single diagnosis. Sometimes you have to think that two diagnoses coexist. So this is the sir, yeah. Sir, sir uh, uh, would you please uh, show the exercise once more? Yes, any abnormal? Yeah. It's just, just looking back, you may think highlight land is person or not, but it's only uh, this is the X-ray exist. I will show the X-ray exist. Looking yeah, back, you may think there is some bulge is there, no? Yeah, some widening of the medial stress. Well, the radiology is thought it's is normal. So that's a thinking back when you want to look at it, there may be there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> The same thing so I finally, have... so, so Madhu, finally it was sarcoidosis only? Yeah, it is sarcoidosis. Okay. So I think in the, this AS level, this, A this A AS level and sarcoidosis never helps. It's always normal. No, here it is double, just increased, elevated. It was okay. uh, AS was elevated? Yeah, yeah, double the value. Okay. Okay. Sir, so, nerve biopsy could have given any clues, sir, regarding its diabetic or sarcoidic. Uh... Here, here, you know, the nerve biopsy is not indicated. We know it's due to the diabetic neuropathy. The myopathy cannot produce sensory loss. So, sensory loss, reflexia, snap absent, reflexia, nerve conduction abnormality can all be explained by diabetic neuropathy, which had been there earlier. Here, present problem is severe weakness of the postural muscle. That is, she's unable to walk. That is because that is improved. With correction of your metabolic factor. So, when you know, nerve biopsy is not going to help in out making a diagnosis. I have one doubt, sir. Uh, yeah. Is it histopathology anything, any evidence we pursued, sir? Histopathology of the my, uh, gland? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Ideally, it should be done tracheobrangial, uh, by, by any state shown a case where we did through the tracheobrangial biopsy from the gland proved uh, sarcoidosis. But here it uh, diagnosed almost a set. I have not done that. I am not planning to do that. We can do it if we want. The problem is that um, we are almost set number of the diagnosis. Because like, uh, the analyst was certain that this gland is not a malignant gland. So uh, can this uh, parathormone assay, you know, pick up the parathormone related peptide levels? So in this condition, it is sarcoidosis. Otherwise, uh, whether Malignancy related elevation of parathormone uh, related. Right. Yeah, that should be that can be done to find out that correct perfectly right. That we could uh, ectopic um, uh, um, parathyroid. Uh, 
Every generation of parents are doing. So, uh, did you do uh, urine calcium, sir? No, I did not do urine calcium. Uh, Madhu, when was this? When was this patient seen by you? About uh, three weeks back. Oh. So I'm surprised that you didn't do PET in this patient because these days everybody does whole body PET. Yeah. In, in fact, I was in fact I had in mind I was about I told the patient by standard yeah. that the yeah. patient may That's may right. need a PET scan. But luckily, luckily before they sending the patient to PET scan, we took a CT. Yeah. CT yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, showed this finding. Okay, this is how only remember that hypercalcemia may can produce myopathy, can also produce hyporeflexia. This is the only to show the literature how it is produced. They can produce cardiac arrhythmia, fatigue, nausea, loss of appetite, uh, they all can delirium, confusion, psychosis, all can occur, can occur with uh, hypercalcemia. So, final diagnosis sarcoidosis, hypercalcemia, hypercalcemic nephropathy. Hypercalcemic myopathy, diabetic, unrelated diabetic neuropathy, and totally unrelated lumbar stenosis. Fantastic, Madhu. Great. I mean, it's really like a Sherlock Holmes story. Thank you so much. So much of learning. Thank you. I did not make a diagnosis initially, only when you got, as investors came up, I could make the diagnosis. No, you know, it is important to know these things. Yeah. You know, otherwise, if you when you are teaching students, you always tell that metabolic things should uh, happen all the four limbs. But then if it may not happen, there are always these variations. So, you know, good. Okay, this is another interesting case. A 60 year old man who is a known, known case of alcoholic cirrhosis was admitted two days back in an altered sensorium following an alcoholic pop. He was admitted under the hepatology, I mean, gastroenterologist. He was diagnosed hepatic encephalopathy and was put on treatment. His sensorium improved. He was kept that really bad shape, his sensorium improved. When he recovered from his sensorium, he was found not to look at the face of the persons to whom he is speaking. He did not come in blindness. But he's not looking at the person who is speaking. But he's answering to the question, but not looking at the person. And he was found to grow poor objects in front when the food is kept in front, he's trying to search here and there for the food. Then made suspicious of the blindness and called the doctor. This is the video of the patient. No, I think I'm asking to point. He's hearing the wife's voice. He, he can point out where she is, but cannot look at he's not looking at the wife. Look at the eyes. I am asking whether he can see me. No, he can't see me. He's not able to see the finger moving. And he's just absent. People is reacting to light normally. And that's why I'm going to go in a blind bridal way to look. Some other is not looking. This is one way to take functional blindness. A functionally blind person will be looking at the finger and be able to move. But he is not moving. Mask look at the finger, he's not able to, he's not looking. Ask him to look at the side where the sound is coming. Again, he's not looking. 
then he moved when he touched the right piece and left piece tar nokike tadilotu nokke mollotu nokike mollotu tar nokike okay padathotte edathotte nice he able to look so one asking to like that rest of the case is generation is normal फिंगर but he is not looking at my finger yeah. so the examination was normal okay okay can you can you so on examination you could not see fingers or any objects in the front yeah. Yeah. Okay. can you unmute your mic can you shift out shift out mm-hmm. yeah who is speaking can you mute your mic please yeah 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 could not see any fingers or objects in front but the perception light was present yeah i had seen i had seen people is normal reacting one day normal yeah we'll keep on them okay but the mic on the mute yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. keep on could not see fingers on my object in front but perception light is present okay. people is normal and reacting one day normal okay, okay. so the examination was normal so what is your diagnosis in this patient anyone uh, first possible is still a functional sir yeah because person there there is one point favoring functional the other point was not favoring because when he ask him to look at the direction of the finger he is not moving even though the person real blindness if is cooperating they have been moving towards right side but his meniscus was absent in this patient that is one point which is against uh, functional but he was not looking to the sound also no? so when you give him yeah. a sound he is not moving the eyes to that side also exactly exactly that's also greatly favoring a functional but subsequently look that's a problem these people people have made some encephalopathy for the part recurring hepatic cancer some day may be attending some day may not be attending. this is all practical problems which we face in clinical neurology clinical examination it all depends upon the attention of the patient also so that what the point you mentions is correct that this to point is not looking at the fingers on the sound initially is not looking at the finger we should have looked if it was blind that two points are favoring blindness that is a particular uh, functional blindness but many so say we are not sure no so what on tapping uh, he saw the side sir yeah, so yeah. Okay. yeah. that that it is ocular movement is normal agree ocular movement that means it may be uh, ocular movement is normal sir he can be instructed to touch his own finger Yeah, then he is not able to touch. That's what I pointed. Look, he was not able to even direct on the finger. His own finger, sir. He was not able to touch. His own finger. His own finger. His proprioceptive input is that he should be able to look in the direction. That point suggested, sir, functional, no, sir. Yeah, that point is a functional. But many so absent. We have to do some more testing, no. So did he get sit some other test which he had done in this patient? Okay. Yeah. So who is I mean I mean speaking? Please mute your mic before speak, please. No. So this is one test by the functional blindness. As the move the fingers together. Hand 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 together. Hand
they will bring the hand up up like that they want to make the equipment the examiner convinced that they are not able to see the finger but in patients who are really blind they will bring the fingers together because they know the finger where the finger is pointing to this kind this test is again is step of blindness the other test i did was this uh, optical testing again that was favoring an organic way there was no moment at all but this can be sometimes be faulty that the patient may not look at the tape unless the patient looks at the tape then only you can this test is going to be useful if it looks beyond the tape then again this test is not going to be proper differentiating the two so that is little more better test as the third test is you can say mirror in front of you then move the mirror in front you can see the eyes moving if it is functionally blind because he is seeing his own face when you move the mirror invariably i will go follow the face with that you not be he and we thought is awareness itself will be going that face that's how the test which you can do but these two tests now done so okay. that it is not there is pointing in the exact alle mokkilla kandu kayi mokkilla kandu kayi thottu 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 correct correct ah and onnu the po thottu correct aayitu inda nare pokki thottu thottu okay sir i don't know ka semiki that's also negative so move it so more likely to be organic blindness what investigators would like to do what is likely etiology now mri brain sir sudden onset vascular can be yeah, yeah vascular very good that's a possibility to look at the possibility of vascular alcohol can... external methyl alcohol can cause yeah maybe press syndrome also we can keep that possibility but total blindness like this likely or but is in a recovering and recovering from the encephalopathy So MRI brain was done. MRI shows no diffusion restriction anywhere. But the radiologist thought that there, this is hyper I mean, hyper density in T1 weighted in globus pallidus, classically seen in hepatic encephalopathy. This is a point you have to keep in mind. T1 weighted cephalopathy. The flyer showing some sulcal hyper density. This is the normal sulci we expect. But here the sulci is filled up or what you call the dirty csf sign or sulcal hyperdensity you see the sulci here that is not visible like the sulci here so that's classically it can be that's a very non specific sign it can be described in subacute hemorrhage or meningitis hypoxia and many conditions can produce uh, this thing right? carbon dioxide narcosis all can produce this kind of a sulcal hyperdensity Uh, even uh, by, uh, the contrast media diffusion also can produce so what this finding was there. so there or that is the occipital area where the patient was complaining about so something there in the brain so what in which it like to do sir fundus so, sir pardon fundus no fundus is normal contrast imaging sir uh contrast was done contrast also no So this again you can make it the subtle hyperdensity so we can do sw sir sw look for bleed yeah uh, sw that's also done they did not see any bleed there see so, so, study yeah in fact the radiologist suspect the sub he wanted a ct to confirm whether it's a blood vessel or not but ct did not see any blood The, the, the brain was actually solid, filling up the space. So the CSF done? Yeah, CSF was done. CSF shows one cell, protein twenty two. See, no glucose, normal. CSF appearance is clear. No subarachnoid, no meningitis. Sir, can it be retro bulbar, sir? Yeah, of course. It's not retro bulbar. It is retro kind of this thing here, uh, beyond the genital body. <clears throat> you know, sir I, any lesion up to the genital body should put this people be affection so it's after genital body in the optic radiation or doctor got us for this cortical blindness it cannot never uh, optic as yes umar yeah, yeah so so in this case uh, the bilateral uh, uh, lateral genital body appears bright here on both sides it is not a lateral genital body lesion or can put put up in the pupil 
Buprenorphine fibrosis goes along with the lactogenic lead body, along with that. So it should be beyond that lactogenic lead body. Macular sparing is there, of course. It will be totally blind. He's not having any field at all. Sir, AION, sir? No, AION also produces, if it is blind, should have the pupil reaction. So he, any metabolic abnormality like ammonia can produce this type of uh, picture? Let us see that thing, a uh, possibility or not. So the EG was done. We showed uh, some pictures suggestive of uh, metabolic encephalopathy. We expected he is recovering from his uh, hepatic encephalopathy, triphysivus and all. So next day, that is 24 hours later, this is the patient. His blindness has recovered. He's count the fingers. Is able to see the and he is able to read newspaper also. So his vision has totally improved. What the cat did? Time in supplementation. No. I did not do anything. <laughs> <laughs> because he improved spontaneously. Because the 24 hours has passed for the investigations to be done. So after the next day, I was all, all throughout the night, I was thinking about what is the cause of his blindness and all. So in fact, we have got a good radiologist in our hospital. Who investigates, I mean, my, who, who and I find searches literature much more than us. So next day morning, this is the EEG becoming more better now. He showed me this article. It is a radiologist who happens to be my own son-in-law. So he showed me this article that cortical blindness due to hepatic encephalopathy. So cortical blindness induced hepatic encephalopathy case report review for which case reports. This gives a spectrum of potentially reversible neuropsychiatric abnormalities seen in patients with liver dysfunction and or portosystemic shunting. Signs and symptoms vary, but usually include disturbed consciousness, personality changes, individual deterioration, speech disturbance, as well as sleep disturbance. Particle blindness is extremely rare feature of hepatic uh, encephalopathy. In fact, I had a suspicion in my time, frankly telling me this could be due to hepatic because I had seen, when I was in Cotton Medical, I had seen a case, Sharma's case, I had seen a patient, so Vernicus is here. And he had an underlying liver disease. I was very sure it's an infarct. I, 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 I in fact bet, bet, I bet, I bet with the physician that it's going to be an infarct. There was no infarct. And two days later, for Nikas, it was improved. I was thoroughly disappointed when I make a wrong diagnosis. So that's the, that lesson I had not forgotten that hepatic encephalopathy can someday present with the transient neurological deficit like when Nikas is This is another situation where. Uh, this is uh, this can occur, but this I am seeing for the first time. Main reports have been there in, in uh, literature showing cortical blindness due to hepatic encephalopathy. Okay. Uh, yeah. so, so, so the cause, sir, uh, is it because of the serum ammonia or uh, was it yeah, cancer? Yeah, yeah. No, no, serum ammonia was also elevated. So it is. In fact, what was causing the encephalopathy in? Uh, in um, this thing, in hepatic encephalopathy is actually not good the ammonia part. It is to the glutamine level, elevated glutamine levels in the, in the CSF and brain. That is the culprit causing the encephalopathy in uh, hepatic. There are many factors may be operating, which we do not know. But the, the culprit uh, metabolite or substrate is the glutamine. Ammonia is a marker for hepatic encephalopathy. Uh, sir, uh, what's the cause of the uh, that uh, dead dead CSF sign in this case? Yeah, that that I initially told you, you know, that it's a non very very non specific sign. So I would literature, such literature, this whether this can occur with the hepatic and so we have to look now or look at. 
See, initially described in meningitis, it's seven minutes subsequently, so many reports are there for sulcular light pregnancy. So much it has become very, very non-specific. Just like our, uh, our uh, what do you call the, uh, the spinal hyperdensity initially described in those kind. No, it's every condition is producing that. That's not at all uh, lock, uh, uh, specific. Okay, any other questions? Shall we stop here? Uh, we can have one more case, sir. One more, uh, okay, one more. That's a little long case. If you want, I can show. Or go for a short case. Short case, sir. Short case, okay. Then give me one minute. Other is a long case. Uh, I'll show this case. Now I'm showing going to show, show the video of this patient. Tell me which muscle is weak. It's a very interesting uh, case. Then I suck her up. Then I suck her up. Right. Yeah. Wait, just let me finish it. Then I said, Both hands. Ali, 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 this is the way to check serratus and the area. Put again to your hand. Right. Then, then your winging will be very obvious. Let's go. Keep doing it, please. Okay. Push against my hand. Okay. Push against my hand. Okay. Push against my hand. Relax. Push against my hand. Okay. Good. Thank you. No problem. Okay, no. I'll show the video once again. Okay. Then I suck her up. Okay. Right. Okay. I said again, huh? I said again, huh? Mm. Okay. Right. Then I suck her up. Both hands. Yeah. Ali, Ali, Ali. Ali, Ali. Get come. Okay. Push it. My winging is there. Okay. That will feel better. Push against my hand. Sir, good time. Okay. Hindi Okay. Right. Then, let's let's get over. Keep doing this. Okay. Push against my hand. Hindi duri. Okay. Push against my hand. Okay. Push against my hand. Relax. Push against my hand. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Thank you. Can sit there. Okay. Anyone would like to make a comment about which muscle is weak? It's a really tough case. Sir, on pushing against the wall, the medial border of the scapula is going towards the just that it's going towards the center line. So Excellent. probably serratus anterior. Yeah, absolutely, you're right. Serratus anterior is weak, weak. and be serratus anterior. But right. sir, the upper border will go laterally, and the lower border will go medially. No, sir. No, no. A middle border, upper border may not go laterally in serratus anterior weakness. What happens? The lower border will go medially. And if you want to push against the wall, the whole middle wall border will be. I can show the video once again. Before that, I'll explain each one. So this is definitely showing a bilateral serratus anterior weakness. Perfectly right. Anything else? Sir, 
Yeah. Sir, he also has a weakness of the left de- left deltoid also because there's a wasting of the left deltoid. Yeah, deltoid power is good. Forget about the wasting. Power is good. And I, I did not specifically look for any wasting. That may be there, but that's not the problem here. Uh, Sir, rhomboid uh, on uh, retracting the chest, uh, rhomboid was not prominent, uh, sir. No, not prominent. It's not acting at all. You're right. Rhomboids are also weak bilaterally because I'm asking to the rhomboid stressing what is happening. The scapula is going out. See, in the case when I ask the patient look push against the wall, the scapula goes immediately. Did you do that? You found that. That's a typical of serratus energy weakness. When you do the rhomboid stressing, the scapula is going out from the midline. That means the rhomboids are weak bilaterally. Did you understand? So. Okay, now I'll to show you once again. I'll stop and then you're not taking the, 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 the pieces weakness. So I'll stop it. Is that error? See, this is a trapezius weakness. In trapezius weakness, if it is weak, the upper border should go out. Okay, that is because the upper fibers, the trapezius and insert here, is should go out. That is what you expect in trapezius weakness. The scapula move outward. As you see in scapula, hum and axle default because the scapula is moving forward in trapezius weakness as in, uh, in the facial scapula, you must be disturbed. Now let us see, this is the trapezius weakness. Okay. Right. Part of the thing. I said, I said again, huh? This is again testing the trapezius. Again, huh? again you find the, there is okay. no moving move to the scapula. Now we're checking the... Come okay. Now checking the trap in a fretus and you find that the inferior angle is winging more. See, the infer- that is typical of serratus anterior because the bulk of the serratus anterior is inserted into the inferior angle of the scapula. The inferior angle will be wing, unlike the pieces where the upper angle will be. The inferior angle is winging. And since the trapeze is inserted all along the medial part of the scapula, not really in the lower part. So what will happen when you are against the, the wall, the whole medial border will be, which you can see now. Push against my hand. See that? The whole medial border is, that is a classical of complete transcendental anterior weakness. With the beginning of the scapula. Okay. Okay. Let me see the border now. It has gone medially. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry. So the uh, the problem is on both sides, sir. Huh? Both sides, both sides. Push it. Both things. Okay. Then push against. Yes, both sides are beginning. Both things. And both things. Because the beginning bilaterally. Now I am going to do that. Rhomboid testing. Less, less at all. In rhomboid testing, the scapular border move outward. Okay. Push against. Here is the scapular is going out. Yeah, yeah. So so like a like a bad wing. Push against me. Yeah. Flats. No. Push against me. No, actually speaking, this patient is actually have big both bilateral. Bi- bilateral rhomboids and serratus weakness. Yeah, it's got a bilateral serratus weakness and bilateral rhomboids weakness, and probably middle fibers are also to be involved. Why I am telling that is that. You, in rhomboid's weakness alone, you will not express such wide flinging of the scapula. The scapula is totally moving out. It is going like a bat, going extended to the, towards the anterior part of the chest. That means the middle fibrous trapezius is also likely to be involved, likely, but we can't be certain because we don't expect a, 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 only that part to be involved. Because upper part of the trapezius and inferior part is very well preserved. Because upper part of the trapezius is for elevation of the scapula, the inferior part of the trapezius is for depression of the scapula, middle fibers is for the adduction of the scapula. But adduction function also carried by, by all the part, upper part and the middle part. Because the, mid, the origin is from the midline and connected to the spine. So all the fibers have a tendency to adduct the scapula towards the midline. So any part can produce the more of the scapula. But here, on Putting the trapezius into contraction, the scapula goes immediately. 
that that means it is there's no real trapezius weakness. But why the scapula is moving so much out during the rhombus secondary make me suspect that some part of the trapeze may also be affected because the function of the midfoot trapeze is affected from the scapula. Okay, forget about that. This patient's got bilateral serratus and in bilateral rhomboids. Where is the site of reach? So this could be something like a facial scapular femoral dystrophy. Yeah. No, the only point of, we don't want a facial scapular femoral, but only thing is that it's got because facial scapular femoral is effective, which my purpose is to be dominantly affected. To do like that, the, the other part, there will be a multiple polyhill like sign. That's not here. No, but as Umar said, the point is that selectivity of muscle involved. Yes, right as a bilaterally and bilateral number so much affected, not fitting with the distribution. Other muscles like deltoid, everything is paired. So, some you are thinking some kind of a myopathy. This patient also had a, actually what had was tonsil cord distal muscle involvement, predominantly flexes, proximal thigh was involved. It was an induced body myositis. But this is the pattern of this. I took only to show you the peculiar kind of scapular meaning. This is a myopathy. Okay, any doubt in this case? Okay, any doubt? Uh, so, what is the CPK in, in this case? Sir? Do you have any? No CPK, I don't remember. This was uh, taken about five, six years back. This case was from Manipan only. I don't remember the CPK value, but it was a myopathy, no doubt about it. And, and the lower limbs are all patchy, selective, symmetrically involved. There's also symmetricity, symmetrically involved. There's another point where bringing muscle, muscle disease, muscle disease. So, can it be anterior horns also? Yeah, anterior horns disease and muscle disease may be almost the same, except that in anterior horns, the muscle disease the is bilateral and almost the same. A symmetrical myopathy is very few. Like which is capillary muscular disease asymmetrical, and but uh, but antihonsil is asymmetrical classically. So symmetricity, specific muscle involvement or selective muscle involvement are the two points favoring a muscle disease over an antihonsil disease. Antihonsil disease is patchy but not specific loops. Specific by means we mean by mean that flexors of the lower limb, adductors alone are affected. Okay, or you can flexors alone are affected. That kind of a pattern, a group of pattern, that's the one you pay over a myopathy. For example, facial scapula, humeral, facial muscle, scapula muscles, and humeral, that's a humeral muscle serenity. That's a pattern. They spare the deltoid and affect the biceps and triceps. And spare the and forearm. So that pattern or selective involvement for the muscles. But sometimes you can confuse with antihonsil and muscle is very difficult to differentiate, like SMA. Okay, any other questions? Okay, Sorry, then. even in the SMA, the, some of the muscles can be hypertrophied. EDB uh, SMA, any... EDB hypertrophy is not is a fair point favoring muscle disease, muscular dystrophy than SMA. In SMA, EDB is affected. Okay. Now, the, the clue one you want to remember is that in distal, here the problem comes a distal muscular uh, dystrophy versus a distal uh, antihonic <laughs> disease. The, EDB, the, the, the usefulness of EDB comes. In those situations, EDB hypertrophy if person suggests a distal myopathy. EDB atrophy favors a distal antifrontal disease, distal SMA. But except in GNE myopathy, you can have, as Kadilka I heard Kadilka talking about, even the SMA affects EDB. In uh, GNE muscular dystrophy, EDB can be spared, in not be atrophy. Generally speaking, one more important clue this I told McCann eating that. To differentiate distal muscular dystrophy versus distal SMA or hereditary motor neuronopathy type. In distal SMA or distal 
uh, motor neuropathy, like peroneal muscular atrophy, it always affects the small muscles of the hands and feet first. Because that's why it produces the hammer toes and club foot, etc. Because they affect the short muscles. In the case of distal myopathy, it will not affect the short muscles. It affects the dorsal flexors and plantar flexors and spare the short muscles. Similarly, if you think of it, myopathy affected the upper limb, like for example, uh, myotonic dystrophy or you think of uh, inclusion body mass actis. They affect the long finger flexors and extensors and spare the small muscles. That's the differentiating point between a distal myopathy or dysplastic dystrophy versus distal neuronopathy or a neuropathy, which affected the distal most part first. So one important clue which you can think about. Any other question? So we can call it a day. Okay, sir. Okay, see you next week. Same. Thank, you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all for attending. Thank you. Good day, sir. Good day. Okay. Bye. Subhash, thank you for attending. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Madhu. Actually, <laughs> I am in a car right now. I am going somewhere, but I am attending your seminar. I am not. I am okay. not. Okay, thank in fact, you. I, in fact, I got a message from Dr. Butch, who is a very prominent uh, neurologist, my old friend from PGI. He yeah. was not able to give a comment. Mike was not looking, but he said that he has suspected metabolic in your case, and he wanted okay. to be done okay. in the beginning. So I just wanted to convey. But okay. Madhu, all things were great. Thank you so much. Be there always. I mean, I, I want this program to go on for as long as we are living or practicing at least. Thank you. I mean, you are working so hard for us, basically. You know. So thank you. Thank you, dear. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, thank you. Thank you.
लगा है कि नहीं थैंक यू सर